Awesome. Okay, thank you again for the introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexander Hölzemann, and together with my colleague, Nimir Soratia, we welcome you to the presentation of our paper, Data Augmentation Strategies for Human Activity Data Using Generative Adversarial Neural Networks. Datasets of human activity data from variable sensors contain different activities from specific domains, like, for example, sports or activities of daily living. Deep learning classifiers achieve different classification results depending on the data set attributes, as well as the use network architecture and the amount of data that is available for training a neural network. However, the amount of data that is needed by a neural network to train a high quality classifier is huge. And in the human activity recognition community, we are at a point where the available data sets do not fulfill these requirements. To overcome this issue, we can, of course, create new data, set, new data sets that meet these criteria, or we can try to enhance available data sets with techniques like data augmentation. Data augmentation originally comes from computer vision and is well researched with respect to visual data, but it is still an actual research area when it comes to human activity recognition and sensor based data. With many current available augmentation methods, Augmented data is often a variable or is not realistic enough. However, in order to overcome this problem, we consider it necessary that in addition to scientific search for alternative network architectures, the preceding steps of data pre-processing and organization needs to be examined in more detail. In our research, we have found that the correct selection as well as the correct arrangement of samples results in large differences in the final quality of the augmented data. Hi everyone, I'm Nimish Sertia, and now I'll continue from here for the data set explanation. So we decided to use PMP2 in our experiments since it is widely known in the community and has proven its usability for the deep learning applications. So here we deleted the null class as mentioned by the author Tillarise, since this class only contains the data from a touching board uh, device to the participant bodies and reduce our data set to eight subjects performing six different activities defined by the experiment protocol. So this protocol defines that the subjects perform 12 different activities in a fixed order. After uh, studying the protocol in detail, we found out Classes are imbalanced and not all the subjects did perform the same activities for the same amount of time. So here we therefore you decided to use eight subjects and six different activities containing four common activities like sitting, standing, walking and lying, as well as two household activities like vacuum cleaning and ironing. So we already talked about the motivation as well as the data set in our previous slides. Now we, have, we will present the methodology of our paper. So generative adversarial network has recently gained the popularity in the field of data augmentation. So most of the research in this field is done using the image data. However, we, we introduced the data augmentation strategies and improved the GN architecture for the time series data to be able to augment the arbitrary number of activities and subjects. So how data augmentation has been done, which strategies, been, uh, strategies have been used, and uh, how the evaluation is carried out will be the part of upcoming slides. First, we will briefly explain the, our data augmentation process cycle, and then go afterwards into detail with the specific data strategy. Afterwards, the neural network architecture will be presented here. Uh, finally, we will discuss our results. So finally, we will discuss our results, explain step by step how data augmentation can be implemented, and point out the possible pitfall. Uh, maybe I I'm able to hear my voice twice. There is some problem is some with microphones. Problem. Who is it? Is it me? Um, Try to speak. Hello. Am I audible? Well? We cannot hear you. Uh, let me try one more time. Now we hear you somehow. Okay. Okay. 
so as i mentioned uh, last but not least we will uh, like uh, discuss the contribution of our paper to the scientific community Alexander, you're muted. We cannot hear you. I'm sorry. Maybe now we now, hear now, you. now, now you can hear me, right? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry for this. No problem. Okay, before going into the details of our methodology, we would like to briefly introduce our data augmentation process cycle. Our idea was to develop a process flow that allows the individual steps required to perform data augmentation to be easily understood and executable. Therefore, we designed the flowchart that one can see on this slide. The process is divisible into four steps. First, choose the data, subject, and activities that you want to augment and execute necessary pre-processing. It is important to mention here that since the GAN will try to imitate the input data, it is not advisable to use normalization yet. Since we would like to synthesize real appearing data, we need to feed our GANs with not normalized data. Second, train the monitoring network with a complete data set, but without leave one subject out strategy. Since we want this network to have knowledge to the complete data set and to be able to classify real appearing augmented data of all classes and all subjects correctly. Third, to map every activity and subject of full wise characteristics into the model, we need to retrain one GAN for every subject and activity or fold and activity combination. The subject or fold wise data is called alpha subset. As soon as the discriminator is not capable to distinguish between fake and real appearing data, the samples are passed to the monitoring model. If this model classifies the samples correct with an advanced score higher than 95%, the samples are kept and merged back in the fourth step into the main data set to train the final model. The data now contains initial and augmented data and is called beta subset. When we started with our experiments, we first wanted to improve the GAN architecture proposed by Ian Goodfellow by using different network element, elements, like for example, SDM layers instead of multilayer perceptrons or convolutional layers to be able to model the time-specific characteristics of sensor-based human activity data. But improving the GAN wasn't as beneficial as we thought in the beginning. So we went one step back and asked ourselves how important is the way we choose and organize the data that we would like to augment. Therefore, we started to compare strategies for doing this. As a result of this process, we distilled two strategies that resulted in a significant improvement of the classifier. These strategies are different with regards of selecting the data to be augmented. Regardless of the strategy, the augmented data is synthesized with independently trained GANs and then merged back into the original data sets. The first strategy focuses on augmenting data for specific subjects. Therefore, we isolate the data subject and activity wise. For every combination of subjects and activities, we, an individual GAN is trained. After suitable data is augmented, we merge the data back into the original subjects. For evaluation and validation purposes, the data afterwards is organized in leave one subject outfolds. The second strategy creates the leave one subject outfolds from the initial data set in the first place. The activities are then selected fold wise. Hereby, the activities of different subjects are merged together. At this point, it is important to understand that because of this specific arrangement of the data, the output of the GANs are samples that cannot be assigned to one specific subject anymore. Rather, the data represents a new subject that did not exist before, but is based on the subjects of the original data set. 
Our baseline and validation networks are based on the deep convolutional RSTM architecture of Ordonis and Rogen. It contains three convolutional layers and two LSTM layers. The data is first reshaped into two dimensions, then fed into the convolutional layers. Afterwards, it is reshaped to one dimension for the LSTM layers. Before the network classifies the data, a dropout for regularization purposes of 0.6 is applied. We train these networks always with the same parameters. These are a batch size of 64, Likun uniform for weight initialization, ADA delta as optimizer, a learning rate of 0.01, and 30 training epochs. My colleague Nimish will now explain the GAN architecture and afterwards presents, present the result on confusion matrices. So moving to the GAN architecture, since Ian Goodfellow has introduced the GAN architecture, GAN network, there is a boost in this field. So it was first introduced to uh, produce the image data using MNIST CPAS or DFT data set with multi-layer perceptual neural network. So in the time series data, the next data point depends on the previous data point. So this Sorry, there are some the connections. Data, oh. The recurrent neural network especially. Okay. Uh, are you not able, able to hear me? Uh, there are some connection problem from your side. We cannot hear you very well. Okay. Try one more time. Now it's okay. Now it's better. Okay. So as I was saying, like in the time series data, the next data point it depends on the previous data point of signal and uh, like uh, LSTM and uh, thicker neural network works well compared to the convolution. So our GAN architecture is also based on RGAN, recurrent GAN neural network, uh, recurrent GAN, yep. And uh, we use the input data as a sensor-based time series activity data. So in the GAN network architecture, there is a and there are two separate networks called discriminator and generator. For both networks, we have used 100, 100 units of LSTM cells, then an optimizer, Adam optimizer for generator network, and gradient descent optimizer for discriminative network. Uh, so data has been fed to the uh, first layer of the network with the mini batches, and cross entropy is used uh, as a loss function for both the network, generator and discriminator. So we trained the discriminator as a binary classifier, so it minimized the average negative cross entropy between the predicted levels and the real levels for both synthetic as well as the real samples. These laws is used by the generator to mislead the discriminator by producing the real like data. So both network generator and discriminator simultaneously trained at each epoch and after arbitrary number of time steps, both of the network will hold an equilibrium condition and cannot be further improved. At this time, the generator has been accepted as a realistic data. So the following confusion matrix uh, will be depict how good deep learning model perform, both the trained with the, with the augmentation data and trained without the augmentation data. So they contain before mentioned six different activities, sitting, lying, standing, ironing, vacuum cleaning, and walking. So the first FIFI reaches the F1 score of 67.5%. The second confusion matrix shows the result of the strategy one, that is subject and activity-wise augmented data. With the augmented data, the F1 score resulted into 78.6%. So it is clear that uh, it has improved the uh, classification result as, uh, than the before net. Parallelly, the F1 score of the other second strategy reaches to 72.6%. So it is slightly lower than the strategy one, but better than the baseline model. Hence, in the both cases, the additional augmented data improved the classification capabilities. On upcoming slides, we will talk about the result in detail, and my colleague will take all from here. So on this slide, uh, one can see a lot of different numbers and we know that this can be a little bit overwhelming and maybe hard to do, hard to understand during a short presentation, but don't be afraid, we will go through it step by step. So on the top side, on the top part of this table, on the top, uh, top part of this table, you can see 
the subject numbers together with the abbreviation for precision P, recall R, and the Avon score for every subject. On the left side, you can see the total average Avon score and the class names. The experiments are ordered horizontally, beginning with the baseline model, followed by strategy one, subject and activity-wise augmentation, and strategy two, fold and activity-wise augmentation. Since the structure of the table is clear now, we are going to talk more about this, the results in detail. The weighted average results are pretty interesting and worth to have a closer look on, especially subject zero and seven are of interest, since they doesn't perform good on any of the models. Therefore, the assumption is possible that the quality of these subjects data is not as good as the others, and therefore it is um, not possible to improve the classification results on data of insufficient quality with data augmentation techniques. As visible in, in this line, complex activities like vacuum cleaning are harder to classify than simple ones, even with augmented data. In summary, we can say that the chosen data augmentation network architecture is not necessarily the most important piece for data augmentation. Rather, a suitable strategy is very important to design a, a successful data augmentation process. In total, the Avon score increased by up to 11.1% depending on the strategy. So now let's talk about the step-by-step -step guide, the actions that perform, need to be performed and, uh, in every step, and as well as the possible pitfalls that developer can fall into. The first, the first step includes the selection of activities and subjects for the augmentation process. So here we select the activities and subjects we would like to augment and decide the suitable augmentation strategy. A huge possible pitfall in this step is that we, uh, we will choose the activity and subject that are not reliable for the data augmentation due to the insufficient number of samples or insufficient data quality. Uh, second step, we apply the pre-processing as well as the window algorithm together with one hot encoding of the labels. So also we, uh, we decided to uh, augment the fold wise, please make sure to create the necessary fold in this step. Even if it is widely used to apply the normalization, we do not recommend to use it yet. It is better to uh, leave it for the normalization uh, for the final data center and for the final neural network model. Also, please make sure that the architecture used to monitor the sample quality, like in our case, deep, conver deep convolution LSTM, do not use the batch normalization layers. However, the architecture of the final model should be modified since it is beneficially used for these techniques. Third, to guarantee that the sample fulfill the uh, requirements to be appealed real, it is important not to rely on the effect that discriminator mislead the generator. Therefore, monitoring network should be trained with all available data. Uh, so, yeah, here the threshold should accept uh, augmentation data should be at least to 95% uh, of F1 score. Please make sure this uh, model does not over or under fit. Otherwise, you will not be able to classify reliable. The fourth step, we need to train the baseline model with the initial data set, but split it into leave one subject out the false. Uh, this subset is called alpha subset. With the model, we are able to compare how big the impact of the additional augmented data really is. The fifth step is to train the GAN with our alpha subset. Keep in mind that for every subject and activity or fold and activity combination, like a separate a GN need to be trained. Parameters uh, to train the GN can be varied and need to be fine tuned at the first. So this is probably probably the most time confusing, uh, kind time consuming step in our approach. However, this can make uh, experience and good understanding of the data set. An important improvement would be to further develop this step, this step with an algorithm that teaches and selects the best fits parameters for every GA. Uh, see, since now we generated uh, synthetic data, so the data needs to be merged back to the alpha subset. Depending on the chosen strategies, it can, this can be either fold-wise or subject-wise. So before training the final model, for example, to deploy in the production mode for a specific application, it is crucial to test it again by applying the leave one subject out cross validation. So here it is important that we choose the correct matrices to evaluate the results. 
uh, several papers has already shown the that instance for accuracy is not precise for multi um, uh, class imbalance data sets. So before we end this presentation, we will have some of the main contribution of our paper. So our proposed approach of using LSTM cells instead of MLP or conversion layer is capable to model time dependent variable of a data set and produce therefore more realistic synthetic samples. The experiment shows that the strategy had a huge influence on the classification outcome by applying uh, the data augmentation increases the data set variability and therefore increases the final classification potential. On the PMP2 data set, we were able to push the final F1 score to 11.1% compared to the baseline model. Our process cycle, as well as the step-by-step -step guide, uh, helps developer to integrate, integrate data augmentation into their projects and prevent them falling into the pitfalls. Uh, we are looking forward to see this tested on more data sets with different net network architecture in the near future. Thank you for your attention. For more information, please read up. We are looking forward to questions and discussions.